Browns 31-27 winners over the Jacksonville Jaguars here at Cleveland Browns Stadium. I'm Mary Kay, let's start here. Kevin Stefanski did make it official. Joe Flacco is going to be this team's starting quarterback for the remainder of the season. A pretty incredible outcome considering that Joe Flacco wasn't even a member of this football team a month ago. He wasn't even in the NFL, and now here he is. He's going to take this team the rest of the way. Yeah, you know what? It seems to me like they kind of hit the jackpot in terms of the backup quarterback situation. They're fourth quarterback to start for them just so happens to be a guy who's won a Super Bowl uh, you know he's he's won 100 games as of today and uh, they they are pretty fortunate to have Joe Flacco running the show for them right now great game for him today he's the right guy to take them home and Ashley the first 300 yard passer for the Browns since Jacoby Brissett did it in a game in Detroit against Buffalo a year ago it has been a weird calendar year here uh, for this football team and when you look at that list of guys that have thrown for 300 yards recently it's Jacoby it's Joe Flacco it's a bunch of Baker Mayfields it hasn't happened a lot in recent years no I mean it's kind of shocking I think again when we go back to not only the fact that Joe Flacco was not on this football team a few weeks ago but I think it's the point that he wasn't even in the NFL a few weeks ago and he was throwing touchdown passes to his brother and his kids at his house like it's a totally different world than we could have ever imagined we were going to live in when the season starts in terms of the Browns starting quarterback and it has a lot more to do with the fact that Joe Flacco spent the bulk of his career terrorizing this team as the quarterback of the Baltimore Ravens. Now, the Browns' pass rush did get going a little bit today, but Miles Garrett, again, had a difficult day. And Mary Kay, after the game, he decided to vent a little bit about the officiating. And obviously, we, we've talked about this with Miles before. He doesn't do these things by accident. This was something he's been stewing about. And he decided that today was the day to go after the officials. Yeah, he certainly did. Uh, you know, he said that if you could see his shoulder right now, it looks like he got scratched by feral cats. Uh, he was held in this game. Blake Hans, former Brown, uh, did some of the holding. He was upset about it. He was held without a sack for the third straight week. That hasn't happened since weeks 15 through 17 in 2021. He's frustrated about that. He's been stuck at 13 now, obviously, for three weeks. And, uh, you know, that's going to hurt him in terms of NFL Defensive Player of the Year. But that's not what he cares about he just wants to be able to help this football team win just like tj watt is frustrated miles is he used his platform to talk about it and ashley you know he used the hack a shack reference today the hack a shack needs to stop and the reality is miles is so hard to officiate these elite edge rushers are so hard to officiate and nobody wants games with flags on every play but i certainly can understand miles frustration yeah you know and mary Kay brought up the 2021 spurt of games where he was held without a sack and i remember that season he used the shack comparison as well i think he said he was getting the shack treatment but basically saying he's talented enough and so big that opposing tackles are going to get away with more in terms of holding him and not getting called for penalties and things like that. So I understand the frustration. And, and like we said, Miles Garrett always says these things with a purpose. So I'm not surprised to hear the Shaq comparison come out again in this moment when it's another three game stretch with that one for him. Now let's look at the big picture with four games left December football. The Browns are two back of the Ravens in the division, but the really important number here is the Browns have five losses and they are fifth in the AFC, which means first in those wild card standings and every team behind them has six losses. So Mary Kay, the ball is in the Browns court. If they win out, they're in. Even if they don't win out, the teams behind them, they can't all win out. So the Browns are in a really good position here to make the playoffs. They really are. If they had lost this game for their third straight loss, I would have had grave concerns about them being able to make these playoffs. But it seems to me now that two more wins could even do it. Uh, but there's a chance that they're going to get more than that and that they won't have to sweat it out with tiebreakers and things like that. So they've got a couple of very winnable games coming up, a couple of tough ones too. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't even 100% rule out being able to win the division. I mean, the Ravens, it's a long shot. They're uh, two games back. The Ravens won today. Um, but the Ravens have a tougher schedule the rest of the way. Anything can happen. And now with Joe Flacco at the helm, I think their chances – look pretty good for for making some hay the rest of the way 
Yeah, Ashley, I mean, after that two-game losing streak, you do start to worry a little bit. But now this win today, uh, it's not a given. Obviously, look, Chicago won a game today. The Jets won a game today. So nothing is given in the NFL. But the Browns are in a great position here with four games left. Yeah, I mean, and I think, again, it's remarkable that they find themselves here for two main reasons to me. The fact that they've gone through four different starting quarterbacks now. They've won a game with four different starting quarterbacks all of the injuries, and I think the fact that they've lost the turnover battle in, I think, nine of their total games, including today. So truly, the way that they are piecemealing this thing together and finding ways to win, that's what good teams do. And yeah, I agree. They're they're not perfect, but they're in a good spot in terms of controlling their own destiny, which is what you want in December. All right, Browns winners. Today, they host the Chicago Bears on this field a week from Sunday. We will have full coverage leading up to that game all at cleveland.com slash Browns.